So I'm going to say load files into Photoshop layers. Same thing in Lightroom. We'd have all our images down in our film strip. We'd select the images in our film strip, right click, load in Photoshop as Photoshop layers. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing inside of Lightroom as it is inside of um, Photoshop. Bridge. So there are all our images. Do I have a stack in there? So there is our um, shot. As I turn off these, you can see we've got our registration issues, but you can do see that it's going through the different stack of focused shots. So what you're going to do is come down here, select all images, shift click in the layers palette. We have all of them selected. We're going to use a feature that's been in Photoshop for a hundred years, edit auto align layers, edit auto align layers. And its partner, Auto Blend, is what we're going to use in just a moment. So Auto Align Layers. This is the same technology that's used whether you're um, combining shots in a panorama or whether you're going to do this focus stacking technique. And in this case, since all we're doing is aligning, we're just going to use Auto. It's giving it permission to do its rotation and even scale if it needs to. Um, when we did our panos yesterday from our copter shots using the Phantom Vision 2, camera setup, we were using cylindrical because that's quite a wide angle fisheye shot. You don't have to worry about vignette or geometric distortion. Again, those are primarily for um, stitching together panoramas. So this is actually, it does an excellent job of aligning. It is looking at every single pixel in the file. And as you're going to see when we turn off, on and off the individual ones, <coughs> it may have to rotate, you know, some images. You'll notice as I come down here that different little edge things are going on. So that's quite a difference between this shot and this shot in terms of what it needed to do. But it ends up aligning all the images. If we go down the files, you can see that the image is now in alignment and it did what was necessary to get that magic done. This is the same scenario that you would do for head swapping or glass glare removal. If you've been with me in the past in my Photoshop classes, you know that's what you could do. Simply come up here and if you've got 10 people in a group shot and everybody's, you know, only one person looks good in each one of those 10 shots, take the entire group, auto align, it'll bring all the people into um, unity and then you'll use layer masks to um, choose which heads you want. It's a great way of auto aligning. We're actually, when we do a hand um, masking to do this focus stacking manually, completely manually, we'll be doing the same scenario. First step of auto align. Next we're going to come up here, edit auto blend layers. And now this is where we're going to do stack, not panorama. Okay? And we're going to ask it to seamlessly blend the image as much as possible. In case there happen to have been some different exposures between them, it'll try and compensate for that. Um, but for the most part, that's really not a scenario that's more related to panoramas. So we'll say stack images. And now it's looking for the different elements of the image that are in focus. Since we're looking through a ring, remember this is quite elaborate in terms of the shape of what are the, uh, the different layers. And you'll see in the resulting image um, how complex this sort of calculation is and why something like a dedicated piece of software like Helicon Focus um, can be useful. This is using one primary um, <coughs> Uh, piece of software technology to do this um, combining of images. Helicon Focus has three different, completely different algorithms for doing this scenario. <clears throat> so anyway, so if we look at the resulting image, this is what it found on that layer that is of one focus. This, it now adds to that, and these portions of it, and these ones that are closer, are going to be masked out this way. As we move back, it's continuing to add different components of the file that it's finding that have a matching focus all the way back to our last one. Very, very complex. If you look at these masks, these are, you know, not something that you would typically want to hand paint, though that's exactly kind of what you would do if you wanted to do it manually. Typically, if you do manually, you're just going to be using something like the center portion from one, 
the edge from another, the background shot, maybe you use two and three. If you're gonna manually do it, you're not gonna be going with, you know, 10 shots or 30 shots or something like that. Typically, there are some psychotic people out here that you cannot say what they will and will not do. <clears throat> but let's look at our resulting image. And um, in this one, because this is a kind of a smooth shapes going through um, the file, it's actually not doing a bad job because we're not seeing any major breaks in this scenario. You can see how good it's doing a match in this thing, even though these are completely different photographs, not even in alignment, it's getting that and it's finding these little chunks and then blending them in where it's appropriate. 